Hey everybody, this is Eric from Phone Scoop, reporting to you from Barcelona, where we've attended Mobile World Congress this week to find out what's new in the world of mobile phones. This year saw lots of action at the Fira Gran Via, where more than 100,000 people stopped by to check out the latest in mobile phones and networking technology. ZTE announced two additions to its Blade series. The Blade V8 Lite is the lesser of those two phones. It has an octa-core MediaTek 6750 processor, an 8 megapixel main camera, 5 megapixel user facing camera, and a 2500 mAh battery. The Blade V8 Mini is somewhat better than the Lite. It has an octa core Qualcomm Snapdragon 435 processor, 13 megapixel main camera with a 2 megapixel secondary camera for 3D shots. It has a 5 megapixel front camera as well as a fingerprint sensor for gestures and a 2800 mAh battery. Alcatel was back this year with lots of goodies to show us, including three phones in the entry-level category, one of which will be coming to the United States soon. Of course, I'm talking about the A5 LED, which has this ridiculous rear panel with about 40 light-up LEDs. The LEDs can be set to brighten up when you have incoming calls or to sync with music that you're playing over the speaker. It's just ridiculous and a lot of fun. Of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention BlackBerry's return to Mobile World Congress. The company partnered with TCL, the parent company of Alcatel, to make a new handset with a physical keyboard called the BlackBerry Key One. We enjoyed this phone a lot and look forward to reviewing it. It has a four and a half inch screen with a full QWERTY keyboard, USB-C on the bottom, standard controls on the outer edges. We've got a nice camera on the back with two-tone flash, and it runs Android with BlackBerry software. The keyboard doubles as an optical trackpad for interacting with the screen. This is a great phone and one of the best we saw. BlackBerry isn't the only company coming back from the dead this year in the World Congress. Nokia is too with a trio of new phones. Nokia has lent its brand to a manufacturing company called HMD Global, which designed three different Android-based smartphones that will be hitting world markets soon, but unfortunately not the United States. First up is the Nokia 3, an affordable phone with a solid metal body. It has a 5-inch screen and an 8-megapixel camera on the front and the back. It's going to retail for about 150 bucks when it goes on sale, and it runs a clean version of Android. The Nokia 5 is a little bit better. It has a 5.2-inch HD screen and fingerprint reader in the home button. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 430 processor, and it comes in four colors, including black, silver, blue, and copper. It's going to cost closer to $200. It also runs a clean version of Android. The Nokia 6 was already released in China. It has a 5.5 inch screen and a metal body. It comes in several different colors. It will be sold for about $250, though not in the United States. You can see a nice camera, nice display, USB-C, fingerprint reader, as well as the vaunted Nokia brand, which is finally coming back to the market. Huawei announced two phones this year, Mobile World Congress, including the P10 and P10 Plus. These are its flagship phones. The company also launched a new smartwatch with Android Wear. The P10 flagship is going to come in eight different colors, and it's be powered by Huawei's Kirin 960 processor. It'll come with a 5.1-inch Full HD screen, protected by Gorilla Glass 5. 12 megapixel camera on the back plus a 20 megapixel monochrome camera for depth information and the front camera has an 8 megapixel sensor. The P10 Plus is slightly larger than the P10 thanks to its 5.5 inch 2K display. It also has a larger 3750 milliamp hour battery. It has the same dual Leica cameras with dual flash and an f1.8 aperture. This phone will also be sold in about seven colors and it runs Android 7 Nougat with Huawei's EMUI 5.0. Huawei is one of the first companies to adopt Android Wear 2.0 from Google and has created this sporty looking wearable with the new platform. Huawei stepped away from the classic design of its original smartwatch to adopt this more fitness focused form factor. We've got large buttons on the side, sensors on the bottom, chunky profile throughout, and a plastic body, which is a disappointment after the leather and metal build of the company's first watch. The watch does include LTE for connectivity, which is a cool thing. LG made a huge splash in the World Congress this year with the G6, its new flagship phone for the year. The G6 solves lots of problems from last year's phone. You may recall the G5 was a modular phone that had swappable rear modules that came out of the bottom. 
LG went with a unibody design this year and a unique 18 by 9 aspect ratio screen. The company also stepped up the specs. We've got a Snapdragon 821 processor, dual cameras on the back, one is wide angle and one is regular angle. We've also got a very nice camera on front for those picture perfect selfies. Let's not forget the rear mounted fingerprint sensor for biometric security as well as scrolling through the gallery and fun things like that. The phone supports Android 7 Nougat with split screen multitasking and of course the latest software from LG. LG has its own Android 2.0 wearable on display at the World Congress, the LG Watch Sport as well as the LG Watch Style. The LG Watch Sport is ridiculous wearable. Look at how chunky this thing is. It is huge. We've got three buttons on the right side, the micro USB port there on the left side. You can see on the bottom a handful of sensors for tracking your heart rate and all that stuff. The controls are easy to use, but the plastic build feels a little janky to me. The 1.39 inch screen has a nice resolution and the platform works very well. This is a connected watch with LTE, so you can use it with your phone number. It should be a powerful addition to your lifestyle. Sony had four phones on display during the World Congress. The XA1, the XA1 Ultra, the XZS, and the XZ Premium. Here's a quick look at the XA1 Ultra next to the XA1. You can see the Ultra is a ridiculous phone with its 6-inch screen and the standard A1 is noticeably smaller with its 5-inch screen. The Sony XZ Premium is one of the most impressive phones we've ever seen thanks to its 5.5-inch 4K HDR display. The lesser XZS is more affordable and will probably be the flagship smartphone most people consider to buy from Sony. It comes in a variety of colors and of course Android 7 Nougat and lots of exciting camera features. It's hard to say just how awesome this 4K HDR display is on the XZ Premium. The depth and contrast available to the display is simply staggering. Showing you on this video, which is only 1080p, doesn't quite do it justice. Just wait till you get a load of this phone in person. Motorola only had two phones on hand this year at Mobile World Congress, the G5 and G5 Plus. Sadly, only the G5 Plus is coming to the United States. The G5 Plus has a 5.2 inch display and is powered by a 2 gigahertz Snapdragon 625 processor. And the United States version will come with 3 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. The main camera has a 12 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f1.7 and dual focus pixels. Selfie cam tops out at 5 megapixels. The G5 Plus has a 3000 mAh battery with Motorola's turbocharging technology. It includes NFC, but sadly, the US variant drops that feature. Of course, because it's Motorola, it ships with a nearly clean version of Android 7 Nougat and Motorola's active display software. That's it for Mobile World Congress 2017 from Phone Scoop. We hope you enjoyed this montage of all the most important phones announced this week. We look forward to covering these devices as they reach the market in the months ahead.